The 6.5 is on the road with a view from Davos. We're having incredible conversations here. You can see the beauty in the background, but this is a conference not about skiing and snowshoeing and doing all these things. The World Economic Forum is really this blend of, of technology, uh, of governments, um, and quite frankly, enterprises from around the world get together to, to talk about some of the most pressing items. And right now, the conversations have really been around, you know, what does the new administration in the United States uh, mean? Uh, global regulation, what does it look like in 2025? And of course, all the implications of generative AI. And with that, I'd like to introduce Rupal from Checkpoint Software. Great to see you. Thank you, nice to see you too. Absolutely. Well, good to be here, Rupal. Why don't we start with the, you know, Pat sort of set the stage a little bit. Um, this event brings the leaders from all over the world, not just from industry, not just from business. It seems to be this private-public partnership. Uh, the Congress, you know, has probably some of the most noteworthy names in the world come here every year. Kind of, what are the objectives you have coming here this year? What are you hoping to walk away from this year's event? Well, the magic of Davos for us is really exactly what you just said. It's public and private. It's four corners of the planet. And so markets big and small, organizations big and small, innovators big and small. And when that all comes together, um, it makes for some fantastic conversation. And being in the business of cybersecurity, that comes together beautifully um, here in Davos. Yeah, d and Davos is all also a really a, a looking forward to the year. I know all the plans have been put in place. We all know what we're going to do for 2025. But uh, most recently, uh, you did a study uh, on, on cybersecurity uh, about what's the outlook for 2025. And I'm curious if you can give us some, some highlights. What are the implications? Why should people here at the show care? Yeah, well, they have been caring. And the Cybersecurity Center is a major center here at Davos. And we've been fortunate enough to be a part of it. And we put out this report every year. Um, and this report talks about the cybersecurity trends and what's happening. And as you might imagine, um, cybersecurity attacks are on the rise. Um, they're on the rise year on year from 2023 to 2024 by 44%. And then when you drill down into that and you look at the kinds of attacks, they are increasingly ransomware. Ransomware attacks, you won't believe it, on the rise 90 percent increase year on year and you can probably imagine what the cause of that is sure absolutely yeah so it's um it, it's startling wait wait we're we supposed to say ai you're you are okay hold on you missed your cue no i know but but it was fun it. no but it was fun, fun. I, was, it was wait, I wasn't sure if that was, it was that was the goal i want to give you the shout out you, know what, <laughs> you could say that again do you know what they are and i'm going to say ai that's no. right that's right and the Sorry. thing the thing about the thing about ai is that it exacerbates the good and the bad and so when you take the streams of AI and AI innovation, and you intersect that with cybersecurity, uh, both the opportunity and the damage is seemingly endless. And that makes for really important conversation this week. Is it as, nothing's easy, okay? Yeah. Is it as simple as staying ahead of the threats, putting in the proactive and defensive uh, maneuvers to thwart uh, the bad folks? You know, as easy as that sounds, um, it really isn't. However, um, this really is our reason for being, and it's the reason for being of the cybersecurity industry. And so we've been using AI for 33 years, but it's always changing, and you never know what's around the corner. Right. And so the thing about AI is that right now, with the advent of the most sophisticated generative AI tools that we've ever seen, um, the bad guys get badder and they get faster, right. their pace increases. And so things like deep fakes, um, there could be a deep fake out there that would mimic the three of us and it would take us hundreds of dollars and it would take us a couple weeks of R&D work to right. get that, but we could get it on the dark web. Guess what, today with seven seconds of each of us speaking and with pennies on the dollar, we could get a deep fake in a day that would mimic the three of us. And probably not saying anything that's smarter than we say, <laughs> although it wouldn't be too hard, but it probably <laughs> wouldn't be something that's flattering. Well, it's super interesting though, because nowadays we create so much of the content, we enable these folks. I mean, a lot of it's our behavior, I mean, right? Everything from the way we don't read our terms to the way we don't update our apps to the way we sort of nonchalantly do uh, shadow IT on our devices and don't necessarily take advantage of security that's being offered from the corporate and C CISOs and whatnot. I mean, we're, we're, we're the 
perpetrators of a lot of our own problems, right? It's, it's cyclical. And then when you add on top of that, new generations. Um, you know, I, I, I will admit that I'm an Xer, and as an Xer, I've got a certain point of view on my privacy. I've got a certain point of view about my data. Well, my kids, who are Gen Z, absolutely have a different mindset. Right. And so we have to operate in this world where built in, there is an expectation and an acceptance, frankly, that I am going to be less private with my data, that it's going to be out there. And so the decisions that I make, therefore, need to be way more deliberate with intended and unintended consequences taken into consideration. And cybersecurity players like Checkpoint, we have to behave differently, inherently, because the decisions that were made by baby boomers and Gen Xers are now being made by millennials and Gen Z, and they fundamentally have a different view about their data. We're hearing a lot, what we hear is, is hey, we're the best to do this uh, at AI, uh, we're putting the most investment, or it's the best investment, uh, what is the secret sauce at Checkpoint Software in this age of generative AI security uh, that, that you think sets you apart? Well, a couple things. Um, first, we've been at it for a while. Um, we've been at it for 33 years, and having been at the beginnings of this industry, I think we've that that long legacy, I think, helps propel and inform our future. And so we, the only thing we know is that we don't know what's around the corner. And when you're grounded in that, it allows you to stay ahead, and it allows you to always learn. And so while we don't know what's around the corner, we're going to be agile enough and invest enough in research and R&D to be able to act swiftly. And that's really what matters here, is acting swiftly, acting with efficacy, acting with efficiency, so that we're providing the world the best solution. And here's the thing, cybersecurity is incredibly complex. And we know that we are in a hyper-connected world. Right. And so it is more important than ever than we invest in providing the simplest way through for CISOs and security professionals to navigate that complexity. Right. So, so let me take it up to the CEO level. Yeah. Uh, you know, we actually partnered with Kearney, um, large management consulting firm, and did the largest of its kind CEO survey on AI. Yep. 213 CEOs running companies with over a billion dollars of revenue. Yep. One of the hot topics was security, but I often have said over the years that um, c boards and CEOs tended to always kind of spend on security a little bit like insurance. Like how much is the m least I can possibly spend to cover my base And get away with it, yeah. In the AI era, you know, to that audience, you know, because there was some indicators in the data, like in your survey, that they're seeing how important security, security privacy, governance are. But how do you kind of advise that group that sometimes because they can't necessarily look at it from the lens of productivity gains, they don't necessarily see it in efficiency numbers, to get the CEOs to really buy-in, how, how are you sort of positioning that? Well, the business of cyber is everything, and increasingly so with AI. So our report said, for example, that 67% of organizations said, yes, AI will have the biggest impact to my security posture than ever, 67%. But only about 30% are doing anything about it. <laughs> and so, and so, and, and part of it is because they don't know what to do. It's, right. a, it's a complex world. And that's where it's really important to consult with and partner with the cybersecurity professionals around you. And it's important to expect and demand simplicity in the rollout of solutions because we know the word of, world of cyber is anything but simple. I always love those like reverse data points, like the two thirds, one thirds. I always call it, uh, there's a one I called the 88 rule, where it was 80% yeah. of brands think that they are truly differentiated in the market, but only 8% of their consumers do. It's exactly <laughs> the same. It's exactly the same. And so our job is to take that 67% and said, right, you get it. Now what do we do about it together? And we are increasingly having those conversations with boards. Yeah, one of the ways that I've seen moving the needle in 35 years of security is finding finding any way in the world uh, to quantify uh, the benefit of a said product. In other words, put a metric on it, because with infrastructure, right, they can do performance testing and there's a certain way and potentially a certain payoff. I think that it would, the security industry as a whole uh, would, would be helping itself by quantifying not just the big risk and the threat, but 
specifically giving the customer a way to do that. You're exactly right. And I sit on a public board in addition to being a part of Checkpoint, yeah. and I see this every day. And it's really unfortunate, but the majority of public boards out there face the cold hard truth when there's a breach. Sure. And when they feel it in their wallet and their shareholders feel it. And so our aim is to quantify that every time it happens to avoid the next time. Right. And to consistently put that data into the hands like the NACD and to put that in the hands of public boards. Interesting. It's interesting, the TCO turns into, you know, like the, you know, RCS study, the real cost of stupidity. <laughs> um, you know, like, like ignorance is not bliss with security. And of course, like I said, we'll see if AI kind of pivots that sort of insurance thinking and really puts it more into a proactive strategy. But uh, it sounds like you've got a lot of evidence and you're seeing it in the market, Rupal. And I just want to say thanks so much for spending some time here with Pat and I at uh, Davos. It's great event. I hope you have a great week. Thank you. Thank you guys you. too. Stay warm. Thanks. And thank you everybody for tuning in and being part of the 6.5 on the road. A view from Davos. So many great conversations here. Subscribe. Be part of our community. Listen to all of the different interviews we have. We are talking to tons of leading executives and those that are really thinking about what the future looks like right here at the World Economic Forum in Davos. See you all later.